a woodworker and an artist and a furniture maker and I teach woodworking and furniture design. I think of wood as dictating some laws or some rules. When you come to the end of a board, it is different than when you come at the side of a board because of the way the cellular structure, the way that it grows. And it dictates certain rules. You can't glue into grain to end grain. Wood expands and contracts. It breathes with the seasons and with humidity. And it's very strong with the grain and very weak across it. And so those are my three kind of rules with my students. And wood design to me is anybody who knows those three rules and works around them with them. But then it can be anything beyond that. And here, because the, the theme was changed, I feel sort of like I'm in conversation with those seeds. And I wanted other people to sort of get that feeling. They're not just looking at nature, nature is kind of looking at them a little bit. So I wanted that conversation to happen. In the piece I'm making right now, there's a, a small drawer box made out of wood, and when the drawer opens, it's going to have some maple seeds in it from local trees, and then a, a sort of a flag on the piece, on the back of the piece, that is shaped like a large version of that, like a propeller or like a little maple seed. And when it opens, it will reveal an eye a painted eye so like the piece is suddenly looking at you. The wood that I'm using some of it was brought to us but the box that I made is made out of a piece I found in a dumpster in Vienna so I use reclaimed materials in my work as much as I can. When I pull a piece out of the dumpster everybody else would say that's trash but when I start working with it and cleaning it up, people will come up and say, where'd you get that? Oh, that's so nice. I think that there is something about wood in particular. It's a warm material and it's a common, everyone knows it, it's comfortable, it's soothing. You can say things with wooden objects. I learned the, the quick, fast methods of making stuff. But to have a background in illustration, I can look at a piece that I'm making and say, I want the line quality to be like this, like a drawing. And then I figure out what joint I need. The painting, definitely, I'm trying to make different elements come forward or step back a little bit with it. So there's something really nice about playing with the wood and making it seem like it's a different material. Human beings understand the world through contrasts. To know that something is really rough, you have to know what smooth feels like. So I love that contrast lets you see how warm the wood is. I think that furniture and wooden objects are so ubiquitous, they're everywhere. And we forget to see it. So I love when I can make a piece that is familiar in that way, you don't think about it, but then it does something that's unexpected. And so you get this really beautiful, <gasps> and people see it again, suddenly. They suddenly start paying attention again. Oh, you clipped quite a bit. 
A lot of people are scared of art and they think it's something that you have to have an education to understand. Art is just a language. I like showing people that, that art can talk about very heavy, hard concepts, but it can also talk about joy and about play and about delight. And, you know, a thing can be sad and beautiful and funny all at once. The piece I'm working on right now is a little, maybe it's a little scary, a little bit like a monster, just a little bit, but it's also fun and joyful and playful. So maybe they go away thinking, oh, I loved seeing how that mechanism worked and it's so playful and so fun. And then maybe the joy is like a vehicle for delivering a, a message a little bit about change and about adapting.